For this lesson I want to talk about gas burners. The purpose of the burner is to combine the fuel gas with the air for a controlled combustion. Remember, controlled combustion is one in which I control the fuel, which is the gas, and the air that mixes it with it, and the rate at which it mixes. There are three types of burners we want to talk about. We want to talk about the atmospheric burner, the power gas burner, and the pulse burner. The atmospheric burner was the most common type of burner up until the last few years. They are used in the smaller units that are installed inside the buildings. It relies on atmospheric pressure to supply the air for combustion. The main parts of the atmospheric burner are the gas orifice, could be a spud or a fixed size. We have a primary air intake, we have a venturi tube, and we have a mixing chamber, and we have burner ports. And this is an example of an atmospheric gas burner. We start off with our gas valve. The, ga the gas comes out of the gas valve, goes into the manifold, and splits to the four burners in this picture. Then we have a pilot burner that provides the source for ignition, and we have the crossover tubes to allow the ignition or the flame to spread to the other burners. Inside the burner, at the end of each manifold, we have a spud or an orifice. Then we have our venturi tube, and then we go into the burners. The burner is made up of an adjustable air shutter, and then it goes into the burner itself. The adjustable air shutter lets you design, lets you adjust the amount of air that's being sucked in as primary air. Some of them have a locking screw as well. Atmospheric burners are found in multiple types. They could be cast iron, they could be stamped steel, they can be single port burners as well. Cast iron are the older and heavier burners that are found in some of the older furnaces. They are made out of stamped or poured metal. This is an example of a cast iron burner. A slotted burner or a ribbon burner that is found on most newer atmospheric pressures is a little bit of a lighter weight burner. Remember, atmospheric burners are furnaces that do not have a draft inducer motor. These are example of stamped steel burners. You notice that they're one piece and they're usually made out of stainless steel. Single port burners have one port on the burner. It can be an in shot, an up shot, or an end shot burner. These are found most often in water heaters and some space bur heaters. One port on the end, one source for the flame, and one flame. These are. This is an example of two single port burners. The one on the right is an in shot. You notice that it comes out the end. The other one is an up shot. Take a look at the tapered end and that's where the flame will come out of the burner. On newer equipment you'll find power burners. Power burners use a fan or a blower to force the air into the burner for combustion. They're used on large commercial units, high efficiency units, rooftop units, and conversion burners where someone is converted from oil to gas. Power burners are ensuring that there's enough primary air at all times for combustion. Another type of burner was the pulse burner. It's used in high efficiency gas furnaces primarily by, made by Lennox. Consider, it's considered a low excess burner, in other words, doesn't have much excess air. It introduces a fuel and air mixture at the burner in short pulses or bursts. It's much more efficient than a conventional furnace. When the firing occurs, the back pressure in the firing chamber closes the inlet valve. The flapper remains closed until the pressure in the firing chamber drops as the product's combustion leaves the chamber. This furnace is no longer in production. It was produced by Lennox, and if you ever see one, make sure you check the heat exchanger. This is an example of the pulse burner combustion products process. The fuel comes in at the bottom, where we're at number one, two, one, three, and four. The spark plug, just like you would see in an automotive engine, produces the spark, which is the ignition. The combustion happens in a short explosion. The back pressure of the ignition forces itself out through the tailpipe, which goes to the exhaust. The air blows across this entire combustion chamber and the tailpipe, and that's how the air of the building gets warmed. Another look at this also shows the condenser coil at the bottom, that is a secondary heat exchanger, pulls the remainder of the heat out of the exhaust gas and allows it to go into the airstream of the furnace. And the flapper assembly is a rubber flapper with a couple rings and a whole bunch of bolts and cover screws. The flapper opens 
when there's no pressure and closes when the pressure of combustion is going on.